McNeil. I am from General Doofenshmirtz. And from the International McNeil Headquarters, here is Professor McNeil. Why, thank you, General Disorder. I'm here today to talk about price searcher, price and output determination. Now, we know that a price searcher has a downward sloping demand curve. That's the characteristic of a price searcher. And if this price searcher charges one price to everyone, in order to sell more units, it has to drop its price not just to the person who's willing to, only willing to buy it at the lower price, but to everyone. That's a one price price searcher. Now, when we talk about price and output determination, we want to know what is the marginal revenue and marginal cost so we can make a decision based on these. If it's a one price price searcher, we know the marginal revenue has twice the slope of the demand curve. So there's the marginal revenue. And with price and output determination, we want to answer four questions. First, what quantity should the firm produce? The rule for this is produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So, here's marginal revenue, there's marginal cost, that's where they're equal, and that's the quantity that the firm will produce, 20 units. Why wouldn't they want to produce one more? Because the next unit adds more to their costs than it does to their revenues, their total profit would fall. Why wouldn't they do fewer than 20 units? And the answer is that any units fewer than 20 on the subsequent units they will uh, add more to the revenue than to the costs and their total profit would go up. So profit is maximized where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. It's an important point here. Alright, so that's the first question. The second question is what price should they charge? And the answer is, the rule is from demand. You take 20 units, you go up, as you go up you cross the average cost curve, that's just a, this point on the, I'm sorry, that's the average variable cost, this point on the average cost curve says that when you produce 20 units, the average cost of each of those units is about $13 or whatever that is, and keep going up, and this point on the demand curve says if the quantity you're going to produce is 20 units, then people are willing to pay $20 to get each of them. Now it's a temptation for some students to say, oh, well let's just go straight to the price axis from this intersection of marginal cost to marginal revenue. But if you were to charge $8 or whatever this amount is, this point on the demand curve says that at $8 people want to buy something like 45 of them and you're not going to produce more than 20. So there will be 45 people trying to buy 20 units. It won't take you very long to find out that demand is what determines the price. So the price is going to be $20. What will be the profit per unit? Well, the formula for profit per unit is price minus average cost. So the price here is $20. And this point of average cost is, we'll say, 13 units. So 20 minus 13 means $7 per unit profit. And then what will be the total profit? And the answer is total profit is either calculated using profit per unit times the quantity you're producing. That's the easiest way because you have both of these numbers. The profit per unit here is $7 and the quantity you're producing is 20. So the total profit will be $140 total profit. Now the other way to look at it of course is to use total revenue, subtract total cost and what's left over is total profit. You can see these areas here. The area of total revenue is equal to, we'll make red total revenue here, the area of total revenue is price $20 times quantity. So this red rectangle here represents total revenue. Total cost, the average cost of producing each one of these is about $13 here. So this blue rectangle is $13 by $20. So this blue rectangle represents total, can you help me here? Total uh, cost. Total cost. 
Now we know that total cost is made up of total fixed costs and total variable costs. So everything from zero up to the average variable cost is, and carried across by the 20 units here, this rectangle represents total variable cost. This top rectangle has to be then total fixed cost. These two together are total cost. And then this difference here between total revenue and total cost is total profit. So there we have it. Price searcher, one price, that's the marginal revenue curve. You find the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That tells you the quantity to produce. Go up to the demand curve, that tells you the price. To calculate the profit per unit, you take the price which you've just discovered and find the point on the average cost curve that corresponds to the quantity you're going to produce. That's your average cost and the difference between these two numbers. That's your profit per unit and your total profit will be, will be in this case, $7 times on each of the 20 units you're producing. So that's price output determination for a price searcher that charges one price to everyone. Are you pleased to know this, General? Yes, I am. Great.